be, I think it'd be int like important to show a simple strategy for how to catch a swing trade on this chart. Because if you just held from the top, let's say you didn't capitalize on any of these big explosive moves up 200%, 140%. This was like a 600%, 300% from the low. It's like, well, how do you know when it's going to finally do its move? And how can I more effectively swing trade this with my trading portion of my bag that's not like my staking bag or um, that's not allocated somewhere else. And uh, two tools that I like to use is are the, on the indicators here is uh, the RSI on the weekly and the MACD. Um, they're the, some of the most prevalent tools that a TA person will use or like the they're they're really good at showing you zones of overbought and oversold conditions. So without going into the depth of like looking for bearish and bullish divergence, which you can do these things too, um, you could simply have put this RSI on the weekly, uh, uh, pull this up on and on hex, and then um, if you come into the inputs here, normally it defaults to 14. So you're, it would look like this, which doesn't give you enough resolution to find edge because these are pretty flat zones. So you can't really, they're not really telling you much as much as if you come in here and you um, cut it in half to seven. Now you can see more clearly kind of the edge in the market. Like if you just simply sold these tops, Um, and then bought these lows on this weekly RSI, you would have made money swing trading this chart. So like Hex was really the, probably one of the easiest things to swing trade in the past like two years because it literally on the RSI gave you the whole story right here. Um, and like in terms of percent moves from each one of these, just to kind of show you the proof is in the pudding, that one would have been 219 from that low, from this low to this high, would have been a 78% move. This one would have been a uh, 140% move. And they, they take these these plays, they happen over um, months of time. They don't happen over a few days. So you kind of have to be convicted and you have to zoom out and look at this on a weekly. Because if we like go to a daily, for example, it totally changes the RSI. In, in a way that it's unreadable. Like you'd have to be pretty adept to figure it out. I mean, you could kind of see the same relationship where whenever the RSI would go below the 30 level or the 22 level here, let's say, which is right here, that was like the best time to buy hex over the past two years. Um, so you can c capture the data points on different time frames, but usually the bigger, the better. And, uh, and then down here on the MACD, I look for bullish crosses on this MACD. So when the uh, MACD goes below the zero line here, uh, you look for these green little arrows, which I put in here just to signify the blue MACD line crossing the orange signal line. And uh, anytime that you get a cross up, it's bullish. And every time you get a cross down, it's bearish. But the bullish MACD cross doesn't mean that you're going to see immediate results. So this, for example, this bullish MACD cross came in um, right here on the price chart, which re which resulted in a 74% move. But then in the following weeks, it actually fell 75% over 140 days. And so your job here would have been to recognize this bull cross down here and just continue to like bring portions of your bag in over this period and DCA in with conviction. And then finally, when this RSI bottomed here, it was the same. It, it the MACD was still moving. You put that bottom in there. Um, it wasn't until we got that cross up there at this price level here, when the fork happened to mainnet, that this bearish, this MACD flipped bearish. And you can use it. You can combine these tools to find the pico tops and the pico bottoms, right? So um, kind of combining just those two simple tools can give you a pretty good edge in terms of like tr swing trading, which is probably a lot more effective of a strategy than day trading. Day trading can, 
you could get marginal wins with there's so much more risk you're taking versus mm. you know you risk losing units of crypto um but by big upside moves and you risk uh opportunity costs um somewhere else 